Hi, Lori. I see that you're there. Uh, Joyce is looking for the participant guide. That's right. I was going to post that into the chat. Thank you for asking, Joyce. We'll get that for you. Amanda, you probably can find it faster than I can. Yeah. I'll get it. Hold on one second. All right. Thank you. No problem. Hi, Lynette, I see that your name is there. I think you're good. I will double check that, but welcome. Pam, Delaware, welcome. Glad to have you here. Oh, I'm gonna say your name wrong. Hello, Tangela. Hi, Miriam. Oh, nice to see you. All right, everyone. I went ahead and posted the link to the participant guide in the chat. So if you click on that link, you should be able to open it, view it, download it and access it. Yeah, and Jody's may... calling in from North Carolina. I love North Carolina. Okay, sorry. No, you're good. For the, for the link, you may have to copy and paste it into a browser if it won't let you click on it, but you should then be able to access the participant mm -hmm. guide. Uh, it also went out in a reminder email, uh, so you may have it there as well. Um, but if not, let us know and we can send a copy to you uh, afterwards as well. But with that... Oh, we can't hear you, Sonia, so you're okay. Yeah, everyone, everyone's currently muted. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to part one of our webinar series on virtual learning best practices. I am Jordan Henson. I'm the director of procurement university at NASPO, and we are thrilled that so many of you have joined us for what has become one of the most important topics facing education professionals around the world. So our, our goal with providing this two part webinar series is to help you move your training and learning to the virtual environment. Uh, I know even as states are starting to open back up, in-person training, it, it may not look the same for quite some time. So my hope is that we can provide you with best practices and skills that you can use right now as a result of the pandemic, but also beyond the pandemic as you work to meet the various learning objectives of your organization in creative ways going forward. So the webinar today is going to focus on techniques and tools to successfully meet learning objectives in an online environment. And then part two will be at this same time next week, May 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. For part two, we will hear from three state procurement trainers describing the challenges they have faced as a result of the pandemic and how they have been working to overcome those challenges to conduct their training and certification programs online in such a short amount of time. So I hope that you will all join us next week for that session as well. Uh, just a few housekeeping items before we really get started. I want to make sure that you all know about um, what to expect to make sure that you have the best experience possible on this webinar. Uh, first of all, we recommend that you use your computer audio if you can instead of a phone line because we are expecting so many people on this virtual event. Um, you've been muted by default, uh, but we do want to make it interactive if we can. So we will be trying to manually unmute you if you have a question or want to respond to something that Lori has asked. Um, so this, this style of muting, I believe, will only work if you are joined using your computer audio. I don't know that we will be able to unmute those just joined on the phone, but you can always use the chat option as well. Um, so a little bit later on in the presentation, we're going to be using an app called Kahoot to play a game and kind of test your knowledge. Uh, it's surprisingly fun, I have to admit. So if you did not see the reminder email and did not download the app in advance, that's not a problem. All you will have to do is go to www.kahoot.com. It's there on the slide. Uh, just have that open in your browser and just wait. And when we get to that point, we'll give you more instructions. But all you will have to do, you don't have to have an account to play along. Um, when we get to that point, all you will need to do is just to select the blue play button in the top right hand corner of that web page. And then we input a game pin, which we will have up on the slide. Um, and you'll type in that pin number. On, um, where it asks for it and, hits, and hit play, and then you'll be joined into the game with us. Um, it's a pretty similar process if you do have the app and you're playing along on the app. All you have to do is launch that, select that you are a student, um, and then input the pin to play along. So again, we'll, we'll have the pin up when we get to that point, but I wanted everybody to have a chance to go ahead and have that pulled up, and we hope that you will play along with us when we get there. 
Uh, also, Lori has provided you a detailed participant guide for your use to follow along and take notes. We encourage you to do that. Uh, if you didn't see the option to download that in the reminder emails that went out, um, we also did post a link to that in the chat. If you um, scroll up, Amanda was able to post that and you should be able to download that. Uh, Lori, will you go to the next slide for me, please, real fast? So um, one of the last things that I wanted to, to make you all aware of is just to make you familiar with your Zoom controls so that hopefully we can get a lot of participation with everyone. Um, this is a screenshot of the control panel, which you should be seeing something similar to this at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, if not, I think you may just have to move your mouse or select the Zoom window to make those controls appear. But from here, you should be able to open the chat window. I know several of you have already found that. And then there should be a reactions button next to the chat. Um, and you can use these reaction icons um, that are also potentially listed in the participant, participant panel. It, it may be in two different places. Um, but you can use the reaction button to raise your hand if you want to ask a question or respond to something that Lori has asked. So we just ask that you be a little patient with this um, because we're having to manually unmute everyone um, for you to be able to speak because we have so many people on this call, we were expecting at least 200, 250 people um, that had signed up. Uh, it could get really unruly and have a lot of echoes. So we wanted to make sure that um, we kind of controlled that, but we also want people to be able to share and ask questions. So um, if you do raise your hand and you have a question or you want to respond, um, we will manually unmute you. And when we do that, I think you will get a notification on your screen that says um, we have asked you to unmute. And I think you have to accept that or click unmute or something to allow yourself to speak. So just keep that in mind uh, and be patient with us as we try this out with so many people. Um, it's going to be interesting to try to make it interactive and fun with such a large audience. Um, but you can also post questions and responses in the chat as well. And we'll do our best to keep an eye on all that. Um, again, with this many people, it, it's, it's hard, but at the same time, we want to try and be as engaging as possible. Um, so I hope, I hope you find this enjoyable and informative. And with that, I'm going to stop rambling and let Lori kick us off. Excellent. So first of all, before we go any farther, it's, it's a really difficult time. I'm just checking in with you. Are you all good and safe and your families are safe? That's more important than anything else. And I just want to make sure um, that everybody is doing well out there. Thumbs up or uh, just we're doing well. All good. Thank you. Yes. Doing well in Pennsylvania. Good. Good. Because that's what's really important. Having said that right now, we have some opportunities to be able to continue helping people learn and to continue doing it in an engaging manner, but being able to do it in uh, cyberspace. So we've already mentioned it, but we really would like you to print out the participant guide. If you can't do that, that's absolutely fine. Just get a piece of paper because writing is one of the techniques we're going to talk about that really helps information stick. And again, if you have a chance, uh, download the Kahoot game. But here's my disclaimer. I do have a disclaimer. I believe training needs to be highly interactive to be effective. Having said that, normally a good sized group is gonna be somewhere maybe between 10 and 30 people. We wanted to open this up so the most amount of people could benefit from it. Now, normally when I do a train the trainer, I'm gonna have you experience the kinds of interactivity that we're teaching you how to do, but we can't do that in this group. So what I'm gonna do is every once in a while kind of step outside and say, if we were a smaller group or if you're working with a smaller group, here are some things that you can use uh, to make it more interactive. So just kind of a, a disclaimer at the beginning, but here's how I wanna start. I'd like you to write, and some of you have already done that, so thank you, the state you're calling from, and then one thing you know about how adults learn. So let's type some in. I know you've given me your, uh, your states for some of you. So I can just take one thing you know about how adults learn, visually, peer to peer. Laura, thank you for that, and Melanie. Experientially, great. 
Adults learn by doing, perfect, by repetition, hands-on, by previous knowledge. Uh, they're going a little faster than I can. When their experience is acknowledged, interactively, everyone has different learning styles uh, without superfluous information. Uh, repetition and hands-on, oh my goodness, real life application, visually with color and interactions with others by doing. Some require more information than others. That's great, direct application, hands-on trial and error. Uh, when they'll retain more, a uh, short, good. Oh my goodness, you all could teach this class right now. That's wonderful, kinesthetic. Uh, immediate feedback, changing things up, keep in att an attention at bay, trial and error. Uh, practice, learning from mistakes, repetition. We keep saying repetition. <laughs> so I guess that's a good one. This is fabulous. So clearly, you know a lot about this. Now, the next thing I want you to do, practice makes perfect. That's great, Duncan. Um, what I'd like to know now is, what's one thing that if you could learn today, it'd be a really good use of your time because clearly you have a lot of knowledge already about how adults learn, but is there anything specific around virtual learning that if you could learn this, it would be really helpful? I'm gonna try to take notes as you're going along. Use of various tools, good. Uh, how to engage, good. We'll talk about that. I won't be talking about Microsoft Teams, sorry. Best websites, Blackboard and Genius. I won't be talking about those, but that'd be great. And if we have time, maybe you can. Increase participation, engagement, tools. We're gonna show some tools. Uh, I don't have anything about exam proctoring websites. Time management, ooh, that's a good one. Don't have that there, but I'm gonna to try to do that. Good countdown timer. Number of slides, what's the max? Um, we will have some info about exam proctoring sites in part two. I'll just put in a subtle plug there as well. Great. How to not rely on so many handouts. I do like handouts for some reasons. How to read room when you can't see them. Oh yeah, that's a really good one. I'm gonna try to do this. How to keep a sense of community, crowd control in the chat box. Uh, so let me just say that if we were not such a big group, what I would have done and what, so let me just explain a little bit about Zoom. And we're gonna be talking primarily today about Zoom. I'm also an expert in Adobe Connect. I am not an expert in some of the ones you talked about. Uh, but if you have questions around Adobe Connect or Zoom, I can help you with that. So if this was a smaller group, and if we were not in webinar mode, so there are two modes for Zoom. There's meeting and there's webinar. And webinar is specifically designed for one person to speak to many. And that's why we chose that for this group, because there's a lot of you here. And the, the webinar version allowed us the most protection and the most ease in getting you all into this class. Having said that, probably I prefer using the meeting for smaller groups because we have some options that you don't have here. And we'll talk about some of those. But one of the things I would have liked you to do, and you wrote them there, but I'll have people write it on a shared white screen and we'll put all the answers in. And then later on, uh, at the end of the class, I'll come back and say, did you meet your learning? So it's a wonderful way to begin and end a session and have it be all about the participants. So why do we do that? Why did we start with those two things? Our brain loves connections. We're gonna talk a lot more about connections as we go on. But the two things we did was we made a connection to what you already know, and clearly uh, your knowledge is extensive. You're you all experts. Uh, but it also made a connection with what you're wanting to learn. And simply by writing those out or asking for those, it helps your brain stay more focused on what we're gonna be talking about. So thank you for doing that. Now, I always love having norms in classes, whether they're face-to-face -face classes or whether they're virtual. Here's the ones I have. 
Everyone speaks, one speaker at a time. E manner, so what that means is if you have a cell phone, turn it to silent or stun or off. I prefer off. Uh, that way you're not being distracted by email or phone calls or anything else. Then my favorite, favorite, favorite thing, and you are all empowered to use this, ELMO. Anyone know what ELMO stands for? If you've been in one of my sessions, you would know, but uh, let's see. Oh, so Rodney, interesting question as I'm waiting for you to tell me what ELMO is. Enough already, let's move on. Yes, enough, let's move on, Mary. Absolutely right. Uh, so keep that question, Rodney. We're gonna be covering how to handle the kinesthetic learner when you're virtual. Good question on that one. So enough, let's move on. What that means is you are in 100% control of the pace of this class. Uh, you can do it in a number of ways. If I keep going over the same topic or you got it already, put up an Elmo. I'll check with the group. If the group all says, yeah, let's move on, we'll move on. Then we're gonna start and stop on time. So I will have you out of here by seven o'clock tonight. No worry about that. I think we're about an hour and a half. I'm not exactly sure. I'll get you out of here on time. We'll see how much of that time we take and how interactive you are. And the most important one, you have the right to pass. If I ask you to do something and you're not comfortable, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you don't have to do it. So again, why do I put up norms? What's the purpose of having norms in a class? And in a virtual one where it's different, expectations are set, good. Shared expectations, buy-in, yeah. Parameters, we're all in this together, good. Learning community, oh, I like the way you put that, Laura. Learning community, that's nice. Um, it, it sets up how we want people to behave. So I think it's good. And it really has a lot to do with Maslow. So let's talk about Maslow for a minute. I, I know you're all familiar with it. Maslow says there are certain needs that have to be met before people can really reach self-actualization. And the physiological needs, um, sometimes... Uh, when I'm doing a session, I might say, uh, make sure you grab a cup of tea or coffee, uh, make sure you've used the restroom, or if you need to use the restroom, feel free, step out, come back as you need to. Mm. Physiological needs taken care of. But I wanna focus on safety needs. What are some things we can do virtually, and that I may have already done, to make sure your learners feel safe? This is where I look to you. Privacy issues, allow anonymous responses. Oh, that's good. Showing your face, yeah, gives familiarity. Oftentimes when I'm doing learning, sometimes everybody's face is up if it's smaller. So create trust. I like that, Zachary, how do I do that? Don't ridicule a response. Well, Tara, that's the silliest, no. <laughs> sorry. But yeah, you're right. Uh, don't don't uh, ridicule responses. There are no bad responses there. I asked how you were doing, good. No personal judgment. I, Siobhan, I think you're absolutely right. It's all answers are equal, right? There's not a, well, that was a, a stupid question or that wasn't the right answer. Uh, so I think we keep personal judgment out. Check on participants, allow open communication. Good. I think Sherry, the letting people opt out is very, very important because um, I, I do think we, we want people, I never, I never ask somebody to do something they're not comfortable with. Now, I've done classes and face-to-face and -face classes where I had one person, and it's only happened once, but it happened, where they opted out of every single thing. Because they were doing one of these, right? And then I asked them if they really wanted to be there. And they didn't. And so they left. Uh, and, and oh, so Laura, that's interesting. Treat people like adults, participation wise. Treat them like adults, it's important. Everybody talks, but they have the ability to opt out. Forcing a discussion. 
anything more we want to say. I am guilty of that one, Laura. Uh, or, so Amber, no, I am guilty of that, Amber. Sometimes I can keep going when I shouldn't. <laughs> Might be time for an Elmo there. Oh yeah, so if there's completion requirements expressed at the front end. So make sure at the front, people feel safe, they feel valued, and then continue making them feel safe throughout. Thank you, that was great. So here's what we're going to be talking about. Now, here's one of those times where the end in mind, good point, Duncan. Uh, here's one of those places I would do this slightly differently if we had a smaller group. We have a number of buckets of information, virtual training pros and cons, tools, brain science and learning, Sharon Bauman's six trumps, and designing training. And if this was a smaller group in the meeting, I probably would have you put a check mark by the plan that you want, or you're most interested in. So that might have been one of the things we would do. If there is one, you could type it in there. While we're doing that, I want to know a little bit more about you, though. And Jordan, would you put up the poll? What I'd like to know is, how confident are you training virtually? Are you extremely confident? Moderately comfortable? Not confident at all. And this is one of those places where it is really good, and, and you brought this up, to have it be anonymous. Because I'm not gonna be comfortable telling you I'm not comf confident at all if everybody else is, uh, is watching me and judging me. So I like polls. Polls are a nice way to kind of get a feeling for how people feel about things. We've got another about 30, well, the numbers keep changing. Okay, that's how that works, all right. Oops, don't know how that came up. Good, so can we show it? Is that, yeah, so about 20% of you find that you are extremely confident. Please share your expertise here, we need you. Uh, for the moderate ones, that's the majority of us, 62%, uh, perfectly good. And there's some of you who may have not done it at all and your confidence isn't as high. Absolutely fine. Thank you so much. We'll just close that out. Again, polling is a wonderful way. Oh, Anita didn't see the poll. Interesting. Uh, might be uh, what you were using. Susan has raised her hand. If we could open up Susan's mic, that'd be great. I'd love to hear from Susan. I don't know, Jordan, if you can do that. Yeah, I might just take a second. Okay. I'm actually, I don't see a Susan has a hand raised anymore. Okay. That was an accident. Okay. No worries. Uh, very good. But we know it works. So that's good. So we're going to start on virtual training pros and cons. And, and to be honest, there are some things that make training terrific and some things that make virtual training terrible. Let's start with the terrific, nah, you know what? Let's start with the terrible because it's more fun. What makes, <laughs> please don't say anything we've done here is terrible. Uh, what makes virtual training terrible? Death by PowerPoint, sit and get, yeah. Oh, I love, sit and get, I've never heard that, I love that. No interaction, just a talking head, bad connections, boring topics, too long, sage from the stage. Monotone presenters, hopefully not that. Data dumps, talking head, one-way talking. The instructor, shh, shh, shh. A lack of engagement. Uh, not being able to tell if individuals understand. Technology issues. So Laura, I love technology because it's fabulous until it's not. And by the way, for all of you, if for any reason you get um, booted out, come back in. If I get booted out, I'll come in. Dogs barking. Uh, Jody, you're saying that and there's a decent chance <laughs> that my dogs may come and bark. Uh, lots of talk, no info relayed, patronizing. It's hard to gauge the audience. I, I started doing virtual, 
oh my goodness, probably 20 years ago. I used to do it on satellite training. We had big studios. It was pretty wonderful. And I thought, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to read the audience. And you know what? You really can still. Um, teaching knowledge only, but practicing skills does not work very well. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Good. I try not to be, you know, but people read you differently. All right. So we have a huge list of terrible. Let's see what we can do for what makes it terrific. You could say the opposite. Disruptions disorganized. Yeah. No clarity around goals and objectives of the training. Pajamas. <laughs> Is that a pro or a con? Easier development of engagement tools. Well-defined interaction. Flex, I will tell you, the one thing I have learned in my 20 years of doing this on, you know, virtually is flexibility. And I think you have to be flexible for face-to-face. -face. You have to be even more flexible with virtual. Uh, straight to the point interaction. Uh, people are vulnerable behind their monitors, check on students frequently, breaking sessions into small sessions. Humor, yes. You know, when you're laughing, you're learning. I like that. Uh, speaker engaging voice, content interesting, stuff to do, knowledgeable instructor with enthusiasm, tone of voice, video can help. Yeah, absolutely. Good. So we all know what makes it terrific or terrible, shared knowledge. So Pamela, that to me, anytime that I'm facilitating training, um, I prefer when the groups share knowledge with each other because your world is different than my world and your experiences are gonna be more relevant to everybody else in the room than mine. Yeah, once you embrace the normalcy of the problem, is there any normalcy at all these days? Uh, yeah, being on camera is good. Uh, there are some things you have to watch out for when you're on camera. I did, I don't know if you all saw this, there was a, a Zoom call, it might have been a newscaster, and the camera showed more than he thought, and he was wearing shorts, which just cracked me up. Anyhow, so let's talk about tools. And again, you brought up tools that I have not at all brought up. So there's going to be more that maybe. And in fact, if there's some, it was on ABC News. Thank you, Christy. Uh, we'll, I'd love to hear from your tools, but I'm going to show you some tools. Now, this is a place I'd like you to get out your participant guide. And there's a reason for it. You'll see there's two pages. It's pages five and pages six. Some people like the drawing part of it, kind of a concept map. Some people like, here's the idea. Here's some activity. Here's the materials I need. Why is it important that as you're listening to this, even though you have this participant guide, why is it important for you to write things out in your participant guide? What's the purpose of that? Oh, Supreme Court, they're toilet flushed. Oh, that's so great. For engagement and retention, cements learning. That, that, and so we asked about the kinesthetic. You remember more, you review, you write it down, it retains better. Writing helps with retention. I had somebody who I studied with who made us put sticky notes all over our participant guide. And then we'd have to take those sticky notes and put them into a calendar and practice them for a week and then come back and do it again. Helps you keep track of notes. Remember one when write, yep, permanent copy, summarizations of the concepts. Now, one of the things I like doing too is sometimes I like drawing and there'll be some places later on where you can draw your concepts and that helps. Um, yeah, summarization, not word for word. But when we talked about kinesthetics, so, so Melinda, I, I have to agree with you 100%. When I write, handwrite, and I, I have, I don't have it here, but I have books I write in and, and participant guides I write in, and it's different than when I type the notes. I, it, I think it hits, and I don't have any brain science about this, but it goes from your fingers into your brain in an entirely different way. Uh, we are not seeing everyone. I'm not sure what that means. 
Gwen, if you could ask that, uh, remember better when I said it down. Christy, I'm not sure what that meant. Every post. Oh, they're only sending it to me. Oh, so here's the thing. Good thing. Write it out. There's two choices. Thank you for that. This is another learning thing. Instead of sending it to me personally, you can send it to all panelists and attendees. Ah, good point. Change your two. Thank you, Melinda. Using flip charts. Yeah, so when I use Adobe Connect, uh, I have flip charts in the room and I use those uh, for writing things down. I'm going to start getting a bigger room for training and I might start using flip charts in a training room too. We'll have to see about that. But writing does really work. So take some notes of the tools we're going to talk about today. Now, we're just going to look at Zoom. And again, this is Zoom, primarily Zoom meeting, not Zoom webinar. But it is some with webinar also. So you can chat, as we've been doing, both personally and with a group. You can go to a whiteboard. Does everybody know what that looks like when you go to a whiteboard? I can demo for you if you'd like to see it. It's a whiteboard that you can write on. Okay, I'll demo it. So to get to the whiteboard, uh, I go to stop my share, and then I go share again, and I go to whiteboard, and it looks like this. And I can um, and I can do stamps, so I can put. And I can draw, not well, but I can. I can uh, erase also. So that's the whiteboard. And you get that from the share. Uh, you don't have that ability right now because because we are the masters of the uh, but it's it's really wonderful. I love the whiteboard. Uh, lots of possibilities. Again, the more you can get your participants writing on, even on the whiteboard here, because everyone will be able to do it, not just the host. Uh, I think it works very, yes, multiple participants can write on the whiteboard at once. Sometimes when that happens, I have to move things around. That's fine. Just know that you can do that. And it will stay there. So you can bring it back up later in the class. I can turn my video off and on. Uh, feedback, raising hand. You can put a green check away, all that. I saw for the first time, and I hadn't seen this, Jordan, there was a coffee cup. Is that right? There is, yeah. I've seen people use the coffee cup option for if you're doing a, um, a longer training, say three or four hours, and you need to step away, go grab a cup of coffee or a bathroom, you can throw that up to let the presenter know not to call on you because you're not there anymore. Excellent. I love that. Thank you. I hadn't seen that before. We can share files. Uh, we can share a desktop application or web browsers. Uh, the whiteboard serves as a file, even though it clears when the Zoom session is ended. Thank you. Uh, we can do polling, as you've done. We can do breakout rooms, not with 200 people. That would be uh, really difficult. But breakout rooms are great. The way we did breakout groups, and uh, we did this for our customer service session, is we actually had producers in each room because NASPO is so wonderful. Uh, and they could put up a slide. The problem with the breakout rooms in Zoom, as far as I'm concerned, is that there's no way to leave a slide in the room. It has to be one of the participants. So if you're gonna use breakout rooms and you want them to look at a slide or want them to look at a whiteboard or whatever you want them to look at, you're gonna need somebody in the room who can help you do that, a producer in that room. But it is, it is a great thing. And it's harder to bring breakout rooms back into the main room but you can do a screen grab and then show it later on. File transfers, we can record. Do you have a suggested amount of learners for breakout rooms? Um, no more than 10, and I think that's a lot. I, I guess I would go five, six, maybe. I've done smaller, three to five. You like, yeah. I, sometimes when you have larger groups, you have to, to do that. 
One thing I do recommend if you're going to use breakout rooms is visit them, check in on them, make sure they're okay, uh, make sure they know how much time they're going to be there for. Uh, again, manage those expectations up front. I like less than five, too easy for people to hide. That's a good point, Lori. So I, I like to let people know how long they're gonna have. I come in and check on them. If there's a change in the time, they need more time. I let everybody know. So good. Any other toolboxes for Zoom? Because it sounds like a lot of you are experts on this. Anything else you've used on Zoom as a toolbox? One of the things I'm gonna try, and I haven't done it yet, because it was so complicated, it scared me, and then Jordan scared me more that I could actually uh, destroy my hard drive. So that was a good scare. Uh, but there is a thing called ManiCam, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Um, I guess these are the other things we can look at. Uh, I didn't put ManiCam up there. ManiCam is a third-party app, and it allows me to do picture-in-picture. So that can work well. Something else I just learned, and this was really fun. Uh, I don't ever use green screen just because I don't particularly like how it looks for me. I don't have the right lighting. But I saw one person who took their slides and made JPEGs of each of their slides and used that for their green screen. So you know how like on weather reports, they've got the, the information right here. They had their slides over there and it, it looked really good. Uh, but you have to have good green screen, you have to have good lighting, and then you have to make each slides. Uh, yeah, ManiCam, I, I, I want it to work with, uh, but I don't know if it works in Blackboard either. It's a great idea, I haven't gotten it yet. Here's some other things you can look at, Metro Retro. Uh, Metro Retro is kind of fun if you want people, you can use sticky notes and move sticky notes about. One of the things I like about Metro Retro and is that you can hide your, your, your sticky notes and then bring them up. And then it's kind of like, oh, well, that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, Socrative, I haven't used. Trello, I use Trello, but I use it differently. Uh, Kahoot, we're going to be using later on. Poll everywhere. And Heads Up can be fun, too, if anyone's used Heads Up in other ones. Any other, before I go into this, any other third-party apps? Tricider. Ooh, I haven't. Do those have to be integrated by the host? Yes. Poll Everywhere is good. Yep. I don't know what Tricider is. I'll have to look that up. Thank you. Uh, good. Vote feature. Good. Uh, hey, Lori, real quick, that one sure. question there, sorry to interrupt, but was about a third party whiteboard app. Um, oh. I do think that Metro Retro kind of does work for that as a whiteboard. Yeah, it can sort of. The other thing you can do is you can take your iPad and use that as your whiteboard. So I, if I'm logged on, I might be writing on my on my iPad instead and just make sure I I have the ability to share it. I'm sure there are other ones that can be used as whiteboards, I'm sure. Here's some of the toolbox, uh, the platforms. You mentioned other ones that I didn't cover. Anyone else wanna, we said Blackboard. I have Zoom, Skype, Go to Meeting, Adobe Connect. Google Hangouts. I think Google Hangouts changed to Meet now or Teams. Uber Conference, I haven't heard that. Classroom.com. Microsoft Teams. I, I have to say Adobe Connect has my heart. Uh, we have found with NASPO that not everybody can, yeah, WebEx, not everybody can use it, so it can be problematic. Uh, 360 comes with OneNote. Oh, that makes sense. FaceTime with one another, sure. Skype, right? You can do that. Excellent. Thank you. So let's get into the brain science. This is my favorite part of this. Because, and you already know so much about this brain science. Uh, it's, it's really, really fun. Now, 
this is again, I just, just to show you, if I was doing this with a smaller group, I would be doing this in three learning centers. And each learning center would have a different activity that they'd be doing, then we'd switch. And everybody would have a chance. Again, we don't do that. But if you want to create breakout rooms, this shows you how to do it. Uh, you go to the bottom where it says breakout rooms, create breakout rooms. You can do it either automatically or manually. Uh, I don't know if there's a limit to how many rooms you can have. Jordan probably knows that. Uh, but uh, you can put people in specific groups or you can just let it go. Uh, but this is what I would have used for this activity. So you will bear with me. We're going to do this as a group uh, and it'll be fine. So we're going to go to Kahoot. Everybody get out your Kahoot app. I'm going to bring it up and tell you what to put in it. And we're keeping our fingers crossed that the technology works. That's the game pin. I'm going to give you a second to put it in. Once I start seeing there's players here, we'll start now. By the way, if you don't want to do it, remember you have the right to pass. Oh, look, all these names are coming up. All of this, so much. We've got 9, 14, 15. Oatmeal. <laughs> Hi, oatmeal. This is fabulous. We tested this out with three of us. I haven't tested it out with a lot. Where do we put in the code? Ah, uh, Jordan? Uh, yeah, so if you're on, if you're doing it in the browser, if you just go to, to www.kahoot.com and then click the blue play button at the top, it should pop up something that says like enter game code and you just type that in and hit submit. If you're on the app, there should be a button on the menu at the bottom that says game pin um, and you click that and then enter that code. By the way, it's kahoot.it. Well, it's, you can do the .com as well. Um, it switches to IT when you start the game, but the uh, homepage is .com. Either one should work, I think. Good. We'll see when we get critical mass here. Cinco recovery. <laughs> is that what I think that is? Is that the day after Cinco de Mayo? I am thinking that's what it means. We've got 90 of you in here. Do you think that's about, oh, wait, there's more coming. Air Bear. Yeah, look, we can give it like, I don't know, 20 more seconds or something. And okay. Then... All right, looks like Looks like we've got it. All right, I'm gonna start the game now and let's see how this goes. Are you ready? <laughs> Myth versus fact game. We learn best when we can link new information to what we have already learned. Hit the red triangle for myth, the blue diamond for fact. Dance it out. Sixty-seven percent of you got it correct. Excellent. I think it also says how fast you get it in. So let's see this next one. For optimal learning, the physical body needs to be motionless while the brain and mind is engaged. Red triangle myth, blue diamond fact. It is a myth. You've got that correct. 78, got it right. 
Oh, we still have the lead there, P. All right, here's our third question. Most people remember more when they sit and listen to someone talk than when they take notes during the talk. Red is myth, diamond, blue, I mean, triangle, blue, diamond, is fact. It is a myth. 75% of you got that correct. Here's our, oh, let's see. Oh, MC has taken the lead now with Zach right on the heels. Sam is coming up there. All right, let's take a look at our next question. We learn, when we learn, we remember images, metaphors, stories, analogies, graphics, videos, better than words alone. Is that a myth, red diamond, or a fact? That's the diamond, blue diamond, this triangle. It is a fact. 93% of you got it correct. Let's see what our scoreboard says. Oh, MC stayed. All right, here we go. Habituation describes the brain's ability to ignore anything that its autopilot reticular activating system decides. Myth or fact? Red triangle myths, blue diamond fact. Seventy-three of you got that correct. Let's see. Oh, Rachel has taken the lead. Christy is falling kind, and M is coming back up. All right. Here's our sixth question. Television has conditioned us to get our information in small chunks, meaning short segments of time. Red triangle is a myth. Blue diamond is a fact. Ninety-three percent, not ninety-three percent. Ninety-three of you got it correct. Let's see. Christy has taken the lead. M is close behind, and Rachel is moving up there too. Now, during this music, this would be a good time to, as I'm doing, kind of just move in place. Oh, Jamie T is the highest climber so far. Bravo! Here's our next one. Longer segments of instruction are better than shorter ones. Is that a myth, red diamond, or a fact? It's not a diamond, it's a triangle. It is a myth, and 97 of you got it correct. Let's see what's happening with our scoreboard. Oh, Christy, ruling it right now. And seven of you have reached answer streak five. Jamba Juice is coming up. Watch out there, Christy. Here we go. Attention increases when the learning environment doesn't change and decreases when the environment changes. The triangle red is myth, diamond blue is fact. Seventy-nine of you got that correct. It is a myth. Let's see. Oh, Christy, you are ruling. You are ruling. And Heather's back in the game with three in a row. M is close on your heels, though, and Jamba Juice is climbing as is walking shadow and MC. All right. This is nine. To increase learner retention, changes in the learning environment need to occur about every 10 minutes. Is that a myth, a red diamond, or a fact? It's not a diamond. It's a <laughs> a 
And that is a fact. Eight of you got that correct. Let's look at our scoreboard. Oh, Christy, you are not at all letting people take over. Nine players have reached answer streak six. M is doing really well there. And Walking Shadow is coming up. Watch out for Walking Shadow there. All right, here we go. 10 of 12 for optimal learning. The physical body needs to be active while the brain and mind is engaged. Is that a triangle red myth or a diamond blue fact? All right, 68 of you got that correct. Physical body needs to be active. If you ever saw my kid in kindergarten, you would know that uh, his mind was engaged, but his body would not stop moving. Let's see, Christy is holding that lead so tight. M is a close second. Walking Shadow is holding their place and Jamba Juice is there. Owen just hit answer streak four. Bravo, Owen. Here we go. 11 of 12, taking notes, moving or talking about concepts are activities that distract most learners from the learning process. Is that a triangle red myth or a blue diamond fact? So 87% of you have it correct. 12 didn't, but I have to read Richard's comment. I just figured out I couldn't click on the Zoom colors. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was brilliant. Thank you, Richard. All right, let's see. Christy is not going to give up here. M has moved up, 14,659. Walking Shadows staying there, Jamba Juice. And Amanda, three in a row, you're back in the game. Bravo. Here's our last question. People remember more when they talk about concepts, when they just listen to someone else talk about concepts. Is that a myth or a fact? It is a fact. Excellent. All right, let's see where we ended up here. Walking Shadow. M came in second. And our first place winner is. Yay! Runners up, Jamba Juice, Darla. Dance it out, everybody. Excellent. All right, let me stop this from playing. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to go back to sharing. Thank you all. That was so much fun. I really enjoyed that. So bravo. Uh, Christy, you won, right? Uh, I'll give you my email and we'll figure out some prize for you, okay? You'll have my email at the end. Just let me know how to reach you and we'll figure out a prize because you deserve it for that. So that was part of our, that would have been one of the rooms. I'm going to take you to another what would have been a room. This is in your participant guide. Go to page nine of that guide. And I'm going to give you eight minutes to do this activity. Uh, this is where I'd be playing music for you, but I we couldn't quite figure it out if anyone can but I'm gonna give you eight minutes to answer this self-correcting worksheet about brain science and human learning. And it'll start now, we'll finish at 4.08. I could sing for you, but I don't think I should. I wonder if I can, I think we have to use legal music, right?
Oh, it's page 10. I changed it. Sorry. Thank you for that. Page 10, self-correcting worksheet. So if we were in a large group, uh, you would work in your room with other folks, which makes this more fun. Um, we can do it together as a group if you like, uh, or you could do it on your own. I like the group work and why I like it in a small group is that people can bounce off each other. So if you get stuck with any of them, you have a whole team of people here working with you. We can pretend this is one big breakout room. So if you get stuck, let me know. Yeah, okay, Heather, can, you can see it up there on the board, right? The first one is brain friendly instructions means using the elements of, and I hope you can read all the list of phrases at the bottom. Can you see them there, Heather? One of the reasons um, that when you do self-correcting worksheets is that it really helps with each other. Good. So take a look at that, Heather. You can take your own notes or put up a question for somebody. You know, what's the answer for? What do you have for answer for? We can pretend it's one big group. Got two, four, and six. And see, when you're doing self-correcting, you can cross off the ones that which limits the other ones. Christy's asking for help from the group. Everybody's in their books right now. By the way, I see a typo on the screen. I think I corrected it, but it's novelty, positive emotions, instructional variety, and active participation. Not emptions. Although it's very, very, very important to have emptions. Whatever the heck that means. Tell me when you're done. We don't have to go the whole eight minutes. But we can, not trying to rush. Done, Jeremiah's done. So get a good stretch in right now if you're done. Looks like a lot of people, oh, at least four. Illinois is done. Get a stretch in right now in your seat. If you're done, lean over one way, lean over the other. Stuck on six. Okay. Good, good, good. I'm going to give one more minute to folks. Need one, three, and five. That's why we're here. We'll have the group help you. When we hit four o'clock, or I'm sorry, the top of the hour, because you're all in different time zones. That was pretty rude of me to say that my time zone was the right time zone. All right, good. So what do people have for one? Which are the phrases? Because Christy needs that. The one that says novelty, positive emotions, absolutely. Two, describe the brain's ability to ignore anything that its autopilot 
reticular activating system decides is repetitive, routine, or boring. Habituation, right. Instructor-led, content-centered, lectured, saturated classes and trainings are brain agnostic, antagonistic rather, not agnostic, antagonistic. Brains don't like that is basically what it say. One of the other boomers asked me whether they should be seeing answers populate the underlying areas. They are afraid to ask themselves. I, we, whatever, whoever boomer, I'm a boomer, it won't show up there, but I have it in the next one. Uh, let's see. Television has conditioned us to get our information small chunks. Absolutely. Uh, and you know what? That I think when he did the work on that and brain rules, uh, John Medina, that was a long time ago. I think with TikTok and uh, what's the new, there's a new TV thing that everything's in tiny, tiny, tiny. 10 minutes is a long time for folk, folks now. It's called Quibi. Quibi, well, yes. Yeah, Quibi. Because we're getting little tiny, our brains don't like going for very long. Brain-friendly learning environments are informal, visually interesting, collaborative. Excellent. Learners remember information longer when they can blank while learning. Drink a cup of tea. Move and talk, absolutely. So here's the sad thing. You're not moving or talking. That's why I want you stretching in here. And Know that you can use your mics if you like. And our last ones, blank drive blank, which drives learning, emotions and attention. Yes. So good. So, um, oops. Oh, I see what happened. I, those are the answers. We've already looked at those. We can move on. Come on. Those are all the myths and facts you looked at. Uh, we looked at that. All right. That's the self-correcting with the answers in there. Oops. Good. Now our last concept center, what have you done that has allowed what you've just seen for brain-centered learning, what have you done that actively engages all learners? This is a place where you can raise your hand uh, or just type. Why we use this concept center three is it now allows the audience or your participants to share their knowledge. I believe uh, you learn better from each other than anywhere. Self-assessments. Oh, I like that, Jody. Uh, yeah, let's, I think online, if we can do that. Word clouds. Did you see that I put um, a word cloud in your participant guide around safety? Groups have to review a software agreement and report out the negotiation points learned in the course. Good. Quizzes, word clouds. Yeah, I, I put that in there and I forgot to put it in the slide deck, but that's another way that you can get people to have concepts in their writing. Anything else? Good. Well, lots of things. Now, this is the book I was talking about. John Medina is amazing, a molecular biologist. He, his book, if you haven't read it yet, I really recommend it, 12 Principles for Surviving and Thriving at Work, Home and School. Somebody just spoke to him and I guess he's writing a book about virtual, the super scientific comfort scale. What is that? I like that. Tell me what that means, Shannon. Can you open up your mic? Do you want to have your mic opened is I guess the better way to ask that question. Okay, maybe I'll explain it. I use PowerPoint shuffle face to face. I'm going to try it virtually. Rearrange shuffled PowerPoint and brief the class. Fail early and often, they say. Good. Shannon, we can open it up for you. Uh, use PowerPoint shuffle. That's really cool, Richard. Hey, Jordan, if you want to open up Shannon's. There we go. <laughs> Hi. Hi. 
The super scientific scum comfort scale is actually a group of faces from a green super happy face to a red negative face. And I let my uh, participants choose which face best suits their comfort with what they're doing today. I love that so much, Shannon. One of the questions I, I ask in face to face and I haven't started doing it here is, how do you feel about being here today? And it's amazing how honest people are. Have you found that, Shannon, that people are pretty honest? I find they're, they're very honest about it and I use it as a way of ensuring that they are signed on to the quiz software for the rest of the day. Brilliant, thank you so much. Which software do you use, Shannon? I've been using Poll Everywhere so far. It doesn't limit my number of words for some of the questions, which the others do. Excellent. Yeah, uh, the game we just played limits the number of words. So, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, we're now going on to my mentor, uh, Sharon Bauman. Sharon Bauman is uh, amazing. I am a certified training from the back of the room facilitator. And uh, I don't know anyone. Uh, Bob Pike comes up, I would say, probably equal, uh, who knows more about how to make training engaging. And as we are speaking right now, we are taking the train the trainer uh, from training from the back of the room, train the trainer, and making it virtual. Boy, is that interesting. We are, we are learning a lot from that. But I want to share with her you her six trumps. And I saw somebody had Trump 2020 as their name. Uh, this is different Trumps. Uh, they are very valuable in learning. Shorter Trumps longer, different Trumps same, talking Trumps listening, writing Trumps reading, moving Trumps sitting, and images Trump words. This is all based on brain science. And what I'm gonna ask you to do right now, in your participant guide, uh, there's a place where you can draw a picture of just something that reminds you of movement Trump sitting. So here's why it's important. Motion creates oxygen to the brain, which also increases cognitive function. What I'm, oh, you have two of those books, Aaron. Aren't they great? And Richard's a fan also. She's amazing. She's amazing. Uh, so what I'd like you to do Virtually, how do we get people moving? It's much harder. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. So any way that you have of getting people to move while doing virtual? I'll have people stretch. I would say probably every 20 minutes, maybe just even rearranging yourself in your seat, uh, tapping on a table, something, musical chairs with themselves. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love that so much. Be like a tree in the wind. Uh, make them take a lap about the room. You might, if you have a longer session, get them up. Ask everyone to stand up. I, I'm still, Pamela, I still, that's my favorite answer. Good. Let's talk about talking Trump's listening. Draw something that reminds you about talking. Here's why it works. The person doing the most talking is doing the most learning. Talking reinforces content. I'm the one learning the most right now. Clap their hands, yeah. Planking. Oh, Lena, that's just mean. How do you get your participants? In this case, we're having you do it through chat, but what are some of the ways you get your audiences talking, your participants talking? Ask questions. Ask each to provide an example of the concept. Play think fast. Okay, Siobhan, you have to open your mic because I'm going to have you play that with us. Questions, ask a question for an example. Can we turn on Siobhan's mic, if that's okay with Siobhan? I want you to play it really quickly with us. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Hey. 
Let's play it and, and then I, write it instead of speaking it. Well, let me quantify real quick. I have not done any online courses. I am an in-person teacher. And so I will either throw up something on my PowerPoint or I will just shout out something to my students, something as silly as name the student sitting in the second row on the right and, and they'll shout out the name or I'll ask a procurement question and they'll shout out the answer. And it just gets everybody competing. They all wanna be the first one to shout out the answer. So it gets them engaged. It, like you said, it gets them a little invigorated and they breathe and they talk and they laugh. And so they, they engage more. Breathing, talking, laughing. That's the trifecta. trifecta. All right, good. Thank you so much, Siobhan. I'm so glad you shared that one. I'll go animate to create a script and do an electronic role play. Oh, Jody, we have to have your mic live. Sorry. I don't know about those. Go animate. How tunes here. These are things I have to learn about. Yeah. Hi, Lori. Hi. Yeah, so these are things that um, people can create a character and then they can create a script and use the voice synthesized. Uh, people tend to hate role playing if they actually have to do it. But if in your training you have them um, create that ring through electronic um, characters, they really absolutely want it and love it. So um, create a very quick uh, either movie using Powtoons or little scene using Go Animate. It, it kind of gets that role playing done and they don't have to physically do it themselves. Jody, I have always struggled with making people do role plays and this is brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. So You're much. welcome. Great. And Lori, real quick, I'll just add to that uh, Go Animate has changed its name to Vyond now. So V Y O N D. Um, I'm sure if you search Go Animate, it probably pulls up the same thing. But just for those that might be looking for it, it it's called Beyond. And, and it, there is a subscription, I think, involved for that software. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have images trump words. Facts become more memorable when learners can use mental images to remember them. That's why I'd like you to draw something that makes you remember that. Uh, other ways that, I mean, I think Beyond would work for this, right? Those are images. So that works. Uh, good graphics in PowerPoint are important. Anyone else have anything they do with that? Picture is worth a thousand words. A story is worth a thousand pictures. I love that. Stories are great. I love having people tell stories. Show workflows, good. Writing trumps reading. Learners remember what they write, not what you write. So you've seen already, I'm having you use your participant guide. Excuse me, if we have whiteboards, they can write on that. Uh, in live, I do flip charts, but they can do it on a, a whiteboard here. Uh, they own it, have places in the workbook they need to fill out. Right, so it could either be the self-correcting or a place where there's room for them to write their notes. I use a lot of sticky notes, so that works for me. Shorter trumps longer, as we said. People's attention span is just terrible. It says 10 to 20 minutes, virtually I disagree. I think you have to have them touching their keyboard or doing something about every five minutes, maybe seven minutes. Virtual, far less patience. Different trumps same. Very, very important. Human brain notices things that are different from things that are routine predictable or boring. What do you do to shake it up virtually? Or what could you do? Or what have we done? You know, even playing the game Kahoot, right? That was different. One of these things is not like the other. I love that. Yeah. Find some way to shake it up a bit. Go from a, a whiteboard to a, a thing. Go to just, you know, I might so I might just go and just be on camera instead. Um, engaging via video, then the slide. Yep. Let's see if I can bring this back up. And there we go. See, but sometimes when you do it, it doesn't work nicely. There we go. Okay. So I want to talk about oh, word puzzles, word scramble, word search. Good. So six memory tools. 
here's the thing that we know makes information sticky. The first thing you say to a group tends to stick because of the primacy effect. The last thing you say because of the recency effect. We've been doing this a lot. Connect with what they already know. Uh, that's why I asked you what you knew at the beginning. Uh, I remember what I have written, so have people write them down. Jolts, things that are different. It's like, wow, that surprises, those stick. And you talked about this a lot at the beginning about repetition. If you can teach something six times in six different ways, it doesn't mean I'm going to just keep saying do it six times in six ways, six times in six ways. But if you can do it in a different way, that repetition really helps. So I want to just go and we, we only have uh, 14 minutes for this, obviously design uh, will take a lot longer to talk about, but we're going to share some best practices here. Sharon Bauman talks about the four C's. The first C is what does the learner already know about the topic? Those are connections. Concepts. What does the learner need to know about the topic? Concrete practice. Can the learner do it or teach it to someone else? And how does the learner plan to use it? So I'm going to show you some pictures, some words, and tell me which of the four C's is it? Is it connections, concepts, concrete practice, or conclusions? Some of these are easier than others. I'll let you read this. Which one is this? Which of the four C's? Connect, yes. Good, connections, good. Let's go to this one. And sorry to say that these pictures are actually of live classes. Uh, we're going to have to change those images. Concrete, good. Oops, sorry. Conclusions, yes. And our last one. Good. So let's look at these. You've got this right. But now I want to throw it out to you. So that first part, connections, very important. Link learners to learners and learners to the topic. What are some things you have done virtually or will start to do virtually to make those connections. And by the way, when we look at these four C's, it's not just for a whole training class. It can be around each topic. You could have a connection, a concept. You can really do that in smaller batches or in the whole thing. So what will you do to make connections at the beginning? Or have you done? It sounds like some of you have had a lot. Short introductions using chat, good. Use polls and room chat since the classes are very large. Self-assessments that non-gradable, good. Yeah, asking what they want from the course is a connection. Having them meet each other, maybe uh, they share uh, an interesting fact about themselves. Send info prior to the meeting, good point. I like that, Diane. along with standard introductions, include fun, fun question. Yeah, I, um, where would you, um, if you won the lottery last week, won $100 million, where would you be today? <laughs> well, that's probably, you'd probably be here because <laughs> you can't leave your house. Welcome wheel, Shannon. Okay, I need to know what a welcome wheel is. 
Oh, you're going to use cahoots at the beginning, Rodney. I love that. Shannon, can we get Shannon's mic up? I want to know what a welcome wheel is. See, I'm learning. I love this. I had a kind of a wheel of fortune wheel, and it's a bunch of random icebreaker questions. It could be, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? Or um, what's your toughest thing going on at work right now? What was your best childhood vacation? And we spin the wheel with each person and they introduce themselves and they have to answer the random question. Have you done that virtually yet? I haven't done it virtually yet. I've only done that one in person. I bet there's a soft, I'm gonna look. It is a software. I am using the software for it. Thank you. Welcome wheel. <laughs> This is why I do this, because I get to learn. Thank you. All right. Concepts. Graphic organizers are great. Um, I like concept maps, mind maps. Anything you do to help with concepts, getting people started on the idea. Whiteboard and can arrange. Yeah, I like that. You think this is where it's okay to lecture, right? For concepts, keep it short, ask a lot of questions, have them um, maybe in the concepts they can talk about which concepts are most important to them. We'll decide. Ooh, good. I like that. We'll decide. Thank you. Discuss and have polling. Good. Concrete practice, so much harder, right, virtually. Uh, what are some of the things you can do to give people a chance for practice? And I think that idea of role playing using the software is a really good one. Scenarios, what would you do? Yeah. Anything else for concrete practice? Um, what we're going to do, you know, if this was uh, a regular class for this part, I'd have you do teachbacks. Uh, I would have you uh, design a class and teach it to us. Short case studies of actual projects, team development of a short PowerPoint training. Yeah, five slides. Excellent. And conclusions. What can we do to make conclusions fun? One, you want them to summarize and evaluate that what they've learned, but what else can you do? I think celebration is very important also. Two truths and a lie. Oh, that's cool. That'd be fun. Games like Jeopardy. Yeah, that would work. Excellent. So what I'd like to know before we've, we've still got seven minutes, word cloud debrief, good. What questions do you have? Uh, I know that we're, I've got to look at my notes and there might, number of slides. Boy, it depends how you use the slides. I know that was one of the questions. A uh, slide deck is not available. I am really sorry. Um, I, that, yeah, sorry. Uh, we do, I think there might be a recording, so that's possible. Um, but how many slides you use really depends on, uh, on what you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes I use a gazillion slides because I'm moving through them rapidly. Sometimes I don't use many at all because unless they're a value add, they're, they're, they're not great. Somebody's asking what is word cloud, if somebody could answer that. Um, were there any other questions that I didn't, goals that I didn't cover at the beginning? You can raise your hand as well using the reactions button potentially uh, if you want us to unmute you to ask a question. People all type one word answers to a question. The answers used the most. Oh, it's the biggest. Yes, those work. Now I know what you mean by word cloud. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's really wonderful. And Poll Everywhere does have that. What do you suggest when teaching a system that students need to upload con contracts? So with that, 
I, you people need to have hands on. And I think with Zoom, there might be a better thing, but I want to see what they're doing. Well, I'm going to throw that out to the group because I, um, because they have to experience it. Zoom, they can share their screens and show what they're doing. Does anyone else do something else to be able to watch somebody do it correctly? To help Joyce out. Share their desktop. And that's what I would do with Zoom. You can share the desktop on that. Remote support, okay. Oh, I love that. Yes, Dan Heath and Chip Heath, the uh, Made to Stick, great books. Menometer creates word clouds, great. Terrific. All right, in our last couple of minutes, uh, I'd like to know, is there anything you're gonna start doing, stop doing, or continue to do? And you can just write stop, start, or continue and just put that in there. I teach for about 10 minutes and let them do it. Have a test system, okay. Start and stop. Start getting students to move, good. Add in fun activities, add more activities, start the welcome wheel, yeah. I wanna get that too. I like that a lot. Start exploring tools beyond Teams, good. Ditto, good, good, good. The wheel creator was called Wheel Decide. Start the six trumps, yeah. Read the newest Sharon Bauman book. More activities to replace conversation, good. Getting people to move, Wheel Decide, explore apps previously mentioned, good. Make adjustments based on student feedback, good, good, good. Excellent. Uh, we didn't talk about this at all because we just didn't have the time, but how you appear on camera is gonna be important. If you'd like a copy of my top 10 biggest mistakes on camera, send me an email, laurie at lauriebrown.com. The other thing, uh, we are working, as I said, on that Sharon Bauman Training from the Back of the Room virtual edition. Uh, it should be ready in June. If anyone is interested in learning more about it, send me an email, I will get to you. And, uh, and by the way, for those of you who are processors, we moved pretty fast in this. If you have questions later on, don't hesitate to reach out to me, Lori at lauriebrown.com. That's right there on the book, L-A-U-R-I-E at L-A-U-R-I-E-B-R-O-W-N.com. And our final slide, Jordan, will you take over? Yep, thank you, Lori. Um, so I did just wanna share for everyone that we did record this um, and we'll be making it available on our YouTube channel um, probably in the next couple of days. But I do wanna thank Lori so much for the great presentation today um, and for making it fun and kind of challenging us to make the most out of our virtual training. Uh, also, I wanna thank you all for attending today and I hope that you have found this information helpful. Again, we're gonna do part two of this webinar series next Wednesday um, at the same time, 3 p.m. Eastern time to hear some specific state examples. So I know uh, some of the things they'll be talking about would be like on online proctoring tools they're using for certification, um, state certifications that they have found um, and just other ways that they are engaging their audiences as well as some other next steps that you guys can take. Um, so if you have already registered and you've obviously attended this one and you shouldn't have to register again, um, you should be good to go. If you are needing a certificate um, showing that your contact hours for participating, uh, we're gonna be providing those. If you are planning on attending the session uh, next week, part two, then if you wouldn't mind to just wait until that point to request the certificate after that webinar, it'll be a little bit easier. Um, but if you are not gonna be able to attend part two next week and you wanna get credit for your attendance today, um, I'm gonna put a link to a short form in the uh, chat box here, and I'm gonna actually make sure to send it to all participants this time. Uh, and you can use that to request a certificate um, that comes to our staff and we'll get that sent to you as soon as we can. Uh, it's also gonna be included in the thank you email that goes out tomorrow, I believe as well. There'll be a link in there to fill out the certificate form. But 
Uh, as Lori said, if you have any questions for her, feel free to re reach out to her. Her contact info is in the participant guide as well. Uh, and then um, we will uh, be able to answer any questions you have if you email procurementu at nasco.org. We can get you in touch with Lori or um, help you out with anything that you have going on. We're always happy to help. So thank you all again, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you so much. Take care now.